Is Binance about to collapse or is Binance and CZ just the best market manipulators to ever exist? In this episode, we're not only going to go beyond the headlines, we're going to be diving deep into blockchain and looking up at all of the confusion and all of the weirdness that has been taking place around the world's largest crypto exchange. So is Binance the next FTX or are they just the BlackRock of the crypto market? Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do Country. We've got to do a better job of getting across that America is free. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of enterprise, and freedom is special and rare. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Joshua Jake, and today we're going to be diving deep into Binance. Now, while I have my fair share of beef with the CEO as I am blocked on Twitter, for the last two years, I have covered multiple times all of the skepticism that comes around the exchange Binance because they do some weird shit. So I want to start today off with this article coming from the Reddit user Tarkov Redditor that was posted six days ago. You see, he brought to light that this is not a FUD post. I'm here to tell you that this is directly fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Why? Because it's meant to incite fear into you so you get your crypto off these centralized exchanges that we cannot trust trust because there's a lot of uncertainty around Binance and I definitely have a lot of doubts and I'm sure you will too. This starts off as a simple day trader that discovered something odd in the markets, an anomaly in the charts and numbers Binance provides themselves. In this post, I wanted to provide hard evidence of the situation and would like to have a discussion about it and what it could lead to regarding crypto regulations. This all starts with FDUSD. For you guys that don't know what FDUSD it is, it is the latest stable coin that Binance is pushing through their exchange. Change. They started with BUSD and of course failed miserably. They got pushed out by Paxos, who was the issuer. But when regulators from the US said, hey, Paxos, you need to stop that, Binance.us got pushed outside of the United States. So then Binance went to Justin Sons, yes, the CEO and founder of Tron, one of the biggest rats in the industry. Not only did Justin Sun just dump on his investors with his best friend CZ from Binance, but he decided to take it one step further and launch True USD which up until recently was Binance's new token or stablecoin that they were using on their exchange. So FDUSD is essentially a stablecoin that 100% did not exist earlier this year and now dominates the market. On the 1st of August, 2023, just a bit more than three months ago, this stablecoin was the first used on Binance and pretty much everything started there about the stablecoin. Looking at its history, it was sitting at a $20 million market cap without any volume before this date. It had a $20 million market cap without any transactions. Immediately, a few days later, it was at $250 million with a 50 million 24 hour volume. Although it's odd, it's somewhat understandable considering that there was a huge partnership with Binance and Binance decided to offer a massive 0% maker's fee on the trading pair. Now, just a heads up on coin market cap, which by the way, guys is owned by Binance. How coin market cap justifies the 24 hour volume for an asset is based off all exchanges and their spot trading pairs over the last 24 hours. Some market pairs are excluded from the sum, denoted by two asterisks on the markets tab. If the exchange does not enforce a trading fee or otherwise offer significant incentives to trade on the market pair. Market pairs with these characteristics though are rather susceptible to wash trading, resulting in artificially inflated reported volumes. Interesting. So obviously guys, right now there is nothing wrong with it. Obviously it's a project most likely funded and supported by Binance from the start and oddly timed right after BUSD shut down, but everything so far seems fine. Pegged, fully backed by the US dollar, etc. Which not only can you find all this information in their FDUSD stablecoin white paper, but you can also see their reserves account report, which will actually show you all of their US treasuries based off blockchain analytics and what their custodial banks or limited trusts are actually holding. And in this case, in October, they were holding $383 million in total assets. These included US dollar amounts backed by US government's guaranteed debt instruments reserved for FDUSD token holders. In this case, it was all US Treasury bills. So here's where it gets weird. So first and foremost is going to be the volume charts as pointed out by this Reddit user. Look how fast it incredibly grew. While that just looks like explosive growth, we would need to realize what that's doing to all the other stable coins. You see, it conveniently lines up that Bitcoin against FDUSD. You can see the volume skyrocketed. We're on the brand new day right here up to 70, 60. On the right hand screen, you can see the volume Bitcoin tab, which is at 50,000, 30,000, 73,000. 
And conveniently, with all these announcements, this was in September 7th of 2023 when all of that volume started ramping up. On September 7th, your Bitcoin TUSD started ramping down. In fact, it fell off the face of the earth. Then you have USDT, which obviously is still doing like 70,000 on average, 20,000, $22,000 in Bitcoin volume. But that's where this gets weird. FDUSD, a brand new stable coin with a $350 million market cap is doing just as much volume as a crypto or stable coin, sorry, that has an $80 billion market cap. And sorry, that was off the auditing report, but right now this has a $467 million market cap for FDUSD. Tether has 83 billion. Now today, Tether definitely has a larger 24 hour trading volume where FDUSD is back down to 1.5 billion, but that that makes things interesting because when you take a look at that volume and how incredibly fast it grew at the time of this post FDUSD is at 1.658 billion dollars in 24 hour trading volume that number is incredible when we compare it with all the other FDUSD pairs but what's really interesting is that it even outnumbers Bitcoin USDT this was on this given day. The most popular and traded spot pair, and not just by a small number, it's actually 65 billion more. That's 65% more than Bitcoin USDT. You can see that it had a $1 billion trading volume. And right here on FDUSD, 1.65 billion. So just for comparison, there is 78 billion, now over 80 billion Tether circulating, which is 170 times more than FDUSD. That means for every single token of FDUSD, it traded four times in 24 hours. At least it should have on paper, but it gets worse. You see, half of FDUSD of the tokens that are already already in circulation, over 186 million of them are staked on launch pool. That's almost half of it. While they can be withdrawn at any moment, it's still odd to see that such a high amount is being staked, therefore not being used in the open market. So I looked on chain to see how much exists outside of Binance, just to see if there might be a large amount not being traded. And I found out that almost the entire supply lands in the hands of Binance. And guys, it's not normal for an exchange to have all of the token supply for stable coins. Here's an example with USDC, which is going to be circle. When you click on holders, you'll notice that it is actually very diluted and that there is 1.7 million holders. And what's going to be super important is paying attention to the box in the right hand corner with the amount of transfers taking place. So you have a token that has had 72 million total transfers, over 1.7 million holders, doing way less volume every 24 hours to a token that was just issued a few months ago that only has 3,200 total transfers ever, 470 79 holders. And guess what? Binance owns almost 100% of the supply. And look at the transfers. The last one was an hour and six minutes ago. And my favorite part is going to be the total transfer amount as of yesterday, which is a total of 11,000 FDUSD compared to, again, 5 billion USDC. Clearly things are not adding up here. So according to this Reddit user, and I agree, I think it's safe to say that a stable coin being just created and traded on possibly only 70 to 75% of its entire supply has still a 4X higher volume in 24 hours than the entire circulating supply. As a trader, I've also noticed myself something odd happening in the last few weeks. And that's why Bitcoin is way more volatile than it was earlier this year. In fact, exactly once FDUSD started trading heavily, the volatility also accelerated heavily with Bitcoin. So let's jump back really quick to the 0% offer fee that Binance was giving for the stablecoin. The 0% fee still have the downside of the spread being applied. So let's say you execute a market order, buying one Bitcoin at $26,500. Market makers can now sell you to that for $26,505 because you executed a market order, which is a taker order. That means that it takes the existing liquidity. So although there's 0% fees, the market maker is still making that small $5 off the top. And this is where winter mute comes in. Now for you guys that don't know what Wintermute is, is they are one of the largest market makers in the game and they are involved heavily with FDUSD. It's safe to say at this point that FDUSD pair is heavily dominated by automated trades from Wintermute and other market makers that frequently deposit withdrawal FDUSD from Binance. Just today was another 50 million, 5 million moving around between both parties. They apply the spreads and provide liquidity to stabilize the asset in both directions. However, intraday and many proven cases in the past, once somebody larger 
actually starts to sell or many smaller orders are executed, they purposely thin out the book to apply as much spread as possible. This is, by the way, also the reason why Bitcoin sometimes heavily spikes and plunges because they thin out order books to add as much spread as possible to the market orders. Now that may sound like market manipulation, but that is why I call crypto Wall Street 2.0. That is no different than what happens in our traditional markets, which by the way, are highly regulated. So who profits out of this? Now you could technically speculate that Wintermute as a market maker also profits a lot off being able to move the Bitcoin value themselves, even if it is at just 0.5% in a day. But think about it if the open interest in volume is worth billions, billions and billions and billions of dollars are being traded on these exchanges. How much profit in spread will they make if they push the price through stop losses and the orders all day? And since they got the control and based on the data perform majority of the trades, there's little risk as well. So market makers profit greatly from this and Binance might get a cut from this from providing level three data or have an agreement in general. Market makers at the end of the day are paid services from exchanges. There is so many deals that can be happening behind the scenes with this. We have no idea how much they're scraping off the top and good luck calling somebody to get an actual insight on that. That isn't a whistleblower, especially in an unregulated industry. Cryptos allows us to do what market manipulators do in the regular industry and then tack on another million loopholes because it's unregulated. So while none of this proves that Binance is directly directly manipulating markets, I'm going to show you why they would have massive interest in a brand new stablecoin. See, FDUSD is 100% backed by USD dollars, US Treasury bills, as I showed you earlier in this video. That means they're earning a yield off all of the reserves. At this point, right now in the United States, rates are at about 5.5%, meaning on a three month bill, they could potentially come out with 5.5% on top of the $400 million they have in the reserves. It's a money printing machine. You convince somebody to give you a dollar, you give them a digital dollar, and you put their dollar in to a reserve account and farm interest from the United States government. And as that generates yield, guess what you're gonna do? This is where hopefully I can answer this Reddit user's thread, but you can take that money and just put it right back into the staking pool and earn now 60% interest off it because you're the exchange deciding on how much is getting released and you're the ones directly partnered with these market makers and these stablecoin issuers. This is fractional banking 2.0 and is why Binance is facing dozens of lawsuits and being attacked by the SEC who gave them 13 different indictments, I believe, and are now starting to sue Binance and push them completely out of the United States. And the biggest issue here is Binance refuses to go through an independent auditor. We have no idea unless we look through their own on-chain metrics, which they own BSC scan and they own coin market cap, we have to trust CZ that they have complete one of one backing of the reserves and assets. Binance claims that in the 10th release of their proof of reserves that the user's Bitcoin asset deposit was about 588K. However, the problem with their proof of reserves is that Travis King called this out and is 100% right. That count is inaccurate because Binance doesn't control all of that crypto. Huge chunks of the Bitcoin included here are in wallets they've never moved out of and have never signed. Binance has given zero evidence of customer deposit liabilities, none. And even Binance former auditor that used to perform their proof of reserves stopped doing the audit because they told the market not to rely on the audit itself and then quit crypto entirely. The only auditing company they had, he said, was like, this is too much corruption. We're washing our hands. We're stepping away because we do not want this to come at us in the future. Red flag number like 10 at this point. And it's not just the United States. You have CZ now being indicted in even places like Brazil. And after halting their US dollar withdrawals in the US customers today, my question is where are those US dollars going to? Now again, none of this is proof that Binance is really directly manipulating markets, but it shows how when you print a token out of thin air and it just so happens that Binance controls 100% of the supply and is directly connected to market makers like Wintermute, being the largest exchange on the market that overall has 75 to 80% of the world volume for crypto, you would never want to use USDT or USDC. Why? Because if you just make your own and print money out of thin air, you can take all of these world's customers and force them to deposit into that specific stablecoin, then put all of that into US treasury bills and earn a massive interest on that that allows you to restake all of that revenue, whether you want to earn a 60% APR on that or prop up and market manipulate any token that you're going to launch an ICO through your exchange that you're going to market then through coin market cap because you own everything and you rinse and repeat the process. So get your crypto off Binance. Put it on a hardware wallet.
get it in self-custody because there's only one of two ways this ends for Binance. Either they get caught, they can't keep taking deposits because they get pushed out of the United States too far and inevitably crash and burn, or you're dealing with a company that potentially could be too big to fail and at any moment as a centralized exchange could pause your withdrawals and they have the tools to completely manipulate market. I trust CZ as much as I trust Cointelegraph News. One's bad at journalism and the other's bad at hiding the truth. So smash that like button and let me know in the comments what hardware wallet or self-custody do you use? And turn on those post notifications because the road ahead of us on this crypto journey, guys, is gonna be extremely bumpy. And I'm hopefully here to be able to pave the road into understanding the crypto markets in a way that we have never looked at them before. With the truth, transparency, and most importantly, integrity, which unfortunately has been lost in this space for too long. See you guys next time.